Hi everyone, it's Karen here and today I'm going to be talking about stencils. I love stencils and these are 10 ways that I love using stencils, 10 different techniques. Um, there's so many out there but these are my 10 most used or most favorite techniques to use and there's so many different stencils that you can create so many different patterns with them. And it's just really a fun way to add texture and color to your projects and that 3D effect and just really have fun and create with mixed media. So you can see that I have many different, many different manufacturers. This one is like Prima Marketing. I have the Crafters Workshop. There is Kaiser Craft, Tim Holtz, uh, which is this one. There is Dilutions. And there's so many companies that create stencils and it's just really fun to use and i just want to show you some of the ways that i like using the stencils uh, this is as i said not all the ways there is to use them but it's just really fun and i'm just gonna get started with my first technique i'm just gonna put these stencils aside For my first technique, I uh, just use this is a Prima stencil, it's called Woven, and I'm just using pieces of watercolor paper or white paper just to show you the techniques. I'm going to be using light paste or modeling paste, but you can, for the, <coughs> excuse me, for this technique, you can use any different thick kind of medium. So it could be paste, modeling paste, it can be heavy gesso like this one. It could be like 3D gel, like something that is really thick. It could be heavy body acrylic paint, anything that is really thick that will not run under the gesso. For this technique, you want it to be thick enough that when you're adding it on top of the, um, on top of the stencil, you will get a really nice embossed look. So this is a really great way of using a stencil this way and it creates a really nice pattern in the background and I love this pattern and I'm going to show you how it looks so I just lift it up and then you go you have a really nice detailed embossed pattern with this paste then you can add color on it you could spray on top of it once it's dry you could do this for any thick material that is not too liquidy and runs underneath your stencil because you want it at that perfect image so that's my first technique For my second technique, I want to use some sprays, and this is really fun to use. This is uh, the Crafters Workshop stencil. It's like a chicken wire stencil, and I just thought to use this for this technique. I'm going to apply some Color Bloom spray. I just grabbed the closest ones that any spray would work. I just want to just show you how it does. So, um, best way is to do it a little from a little bit further, so um, you get that kind of a spray on top of your on your paper and it still creates that really nice effect. And this will definitely run, so as you can see, wherever there is more ink, it, it will run under the stencil, and whenever it's um, less ink, it actually creates the pattern. And you can definitely overlap different colors and different stencils. So for example, you could use a different kind of stencil to create another pattern. So I could take, for example, this Dilutions one, just it's best though if we dry first. So I dry this a little bit just to make sure. And then you could create another pattern on top with a different color and this will just, they'll both be together. So that's what I like about this, that you can create different patterns using just sprays and it's just really nice it kind of gives it that distressed look and uh, it's a really fun technique to use so that's for number two For this next technique, I'm going to use gelatos but you could really use any medium that use any medium that reacts with water because it's a reverse um, remove technique. I don't know how to call it, I actually don't have a name for it. And it's one of the techniques I use a lot. It's really fun to use. And the first thing I'm going to do is just cover this paper with a little bit of the ink, of the gelato ink. Um, it's It works best if you use it on a smooth surface. The smoother the surface is, the easier it will work, but it does work on many different surfaces as well. So here is, I'm just adding some of this color first and then, just going to add some of the purple. I just want to show the effect. 
it doesn't have to be perfect I just want to show how nice this effect is on on things and this would work well with any watercolor a, a paper let's say you, you put watercolor on something and it reacts still reactive with water or the water soluble oil pastels from Prima so anything like this that reacts with water will work perfectly for this technique so I'm gonna put this on top and then I'm just gonna grab a very nice wet wipe and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna start rubbing above the areas where the stencil and what it does is that it removes some of the ink from the areas where the stencil is open and it creates a really nice pattern in the background. So I really love this technique because the, the, it comes out really, really nice. So you can see, there you go. So it's a really nice, fun technique to use. This reverse, uh, I don't know, reverse stencil technique, so in a way. And I love this stencil, this um, craft, this is the Crafters Workshop stencil. It's the um, wrap stones, I think. Oh, I have to get the name. I will, I will link all the names below in the description area of the YouTube video. For the next technique, we're just gonna, I'm gonna just use ink. Uh, it doesn't really matter which type of ink you use. Uh, you can use distress oxide or distress ink. You could use dye ink. You can use archival ink. You can use um, this one, chalk ink. So it doesn't really matter. The technique works the same way. And you could use the ink directly on the stencil. So for example, you could go ahead and use this and just dub it on top and create that pattern. Okay, but what you can also do, so I'm just going to use this corner to just show you that, and this is how it turns out. So it turns out really nicely, and you can really do that technique easily with just a dauber, uh, with just the ink, or you could take a dauber from um, any type, any type of sponge one, and you could just use it to create a pattern in the background and you could mix different colors on this. I just took green just to show the idea of how it works. And any type of ink will work for this. Any different type of ink. It doesn't really matter which one. And it creates a perfect a perfect pattern. And I see here I just want to finish it up. So you could always go back, match it up exactly. The nice thing about this is that you could really match it up and finish up the edges so in this case i didn't have the edge so you could just move it a little bit and just finish up here and then you have the rest of the pattern so that's another fun way to use a stencil very simple way and it's really fun to create really nice pattern in the background another fun way of adding using a stencil is with paint and as I said, if it's a really heavy body paint, you could just put it directly with a palette knife or that silicone brush. But if you have a li more liquidy kind of paint, then it's easier to use something like a sponge applicator or just any sponge. You could use one like from the dollar store. And it's just really easy to, you basically just can dab things with the paint on top. So for example, this is the heavy body one. So I wanna try both of them. So you want to be careful right with the paint. You don't want to have too much on your on your sponge because you want to make sure that it doesn't run underneath. You want to create that pattern without having to run it underneath. So you could go like this or you could dab and that works just as well. And for the other one, we're going to try a little bit of a liquidy, more of a liquidy paint. Just want to put a little bit on here on my mat. And this is a really great mat. I don't know, it's a Ken Oliver mat. I bought it and it's a really big mat that it covers my whole uh, table. And it's just really great because um, it's really easy to clean. So I'm quite excited about this mat that I recently got. So, and I just, as I said, everything is linked in the description area below. So if you want to get one like this, it's really fun and it's really easy to use. So as you can see, I'm trying not to have my sponge too liquidy. So it works well when I'm applying it. 
I might have not used such a good pattern for this stencil but it should still work and um, because it's so liquidy I'm just trying to be careful and I'm dabbing it carefully around to make sure that it doesn't run underneath and it might still run and that's okay but if you want to really be like perfect with it then you have to you have to make sure that you that you are don't put apply a lot of it on so there you go it didn't come out as much I didn't use such a good pattern for this I should have used a better pattern I want to just maybe show you again with a better pattern um, as you can see though with this you see the thicker one worked better than the thinner in terms of like how it ran underneath um, so let's go back to these um, to these circle ones from dilutions just to show you what I mean so in this I'm gonna soak up my sponge and I'm going to press and just so you and you can also rub around you can also use it as a rub oh yeah see it's, this is working much better you could rub it and you're gonna see how well it comes so this makes the two colors kind of mix together and it was really nice because you can get this really nice pattern there you go so now it's much better so you could use paint like this so the thick one you could definitely um, use it straight but if it's a thin one like what I just did it's best if you uh, use it with a sponge to dog for my next technique I'm going to use my gel plate and this is a really fun technique to do with stencils as well so I'm just going to again grab one of my stencils I want to grab one that has a good pattern like something like the rocks here just to show you how it works so I'm going to add a little and this again works with many different things I'm going to add a little bit of oops of the heavy body one but I'm also going to use a little bit of the liquid one so it's really good that you, the nice thing about the gel plates is you can use any type of paint for this oops okay so there we go okay there we go so the nice thing hold on I want to wipe this off okay so when you put this on the nice thing is that you can get two images out of this so for example you can first get the image of the actual stencil when you're pressing so hold on I think there was not enough ink there so I'm just going to move it around a little bit there we go so you can get that stenciled image I want to add some more over here so there we go so you can get that stenciled image through the thin, through the through this through the paper but also you could remove this and use another paper to actually get the ghost image or the reverse image of this so that's what's really nice about the gel plate you can create lots of different images using there you go so you see I got the reverse image and it's a, just as beautiful as the other one and the last thing is that you could use the actual stencil to stamp with it and this is an extra I guess technique here but you could use the stencil and I mean you have to act fast because you don't want this to kind of dry up and yeah it doesn't work as well once it's dry so you have to kind of work really hard to make sure that it does maybe I should have done this first as it didn't really work as well but you could what I'm trying to say let me put this back on see if I can press on it a little bit more and have that wetness come on so yes yeah, so there we go so now when I go and press here the actual uh, image will come on so not as good as the other one but pretty much if you had more paint it would definitely work 
well. Um, another thing is just making sure that you clean your stencils really well. So that's a, a really important thing. I'm not very good at cleaning stencils, but I just recently did a video and I will link that as well um, on how to clean stencils if you are not good at cleaning things as, my, as well as I am. Uh, I mean, as I am because I don't clean stencils as well. So as long as you're doing it right after, they come, it cleans really well. So there we go, that's the next technique. The next technique is quite simple. It's just basically using the stencil to create marks with either a pencil or a marker or anything like that. And you could really, um, you know, go in between the lines and create this kind of really nice doodling, you know, add it to certain areas. So that's really fun to do. And you could like uh, use the stencils to just basically have that outline. So, so for example, you can do something like this and you have this outline, or you could go into things like a circle, for example, and create little circles. And there's different, different templates of circles, or squares, and things like that. So I've done this before where I just basically go around with a stencil and create uh, nice little marks and these actually after can be colored in so you could do anything you could use any of these stencils that I had to kind of be colored to color in with some watercolor or with crayons or with pencil crayons so basically you know the possibilities are endless and you could create bubbles you could create any different type of um, pattern depending on the stencils that you have The other technique that I want to use is I want to show how to do embossing on with a stencil and this is a, the crafters workshop stencil it's called the mini sweet peas and the other one with the pebbles it's called mini pebbles tied so that I went to look up the name of that other stencil so what you can do is you can either use the dabber um, but if you don't have that then you can use one of the sponge applicators and basically just dab on top and then you can create this really nice pattern in the background using some embossing ink so once you have it all done then you go into this is just a gold ranger princess gold embossing powder that I just put in a container so it's easier to apply and it has like a little spoon inside so basically uh, you just go and you go on top okay and there you have it. Oh, I think I had a little bit of a wetness there, but basically you can emboss, you can emboss it on. Oh, I just made a mess here as well. And that happens with embossing. Um, so I will just clean it up. Sorry about that. And then uh, all I have to do is just basically heat emboss this. So you can just uh, apply heat to it and you see the color changing of course like an embossing powder and it's changing to gold and I forgot because this was my second tryout of doing this because the first time this the first stencil you want a stencil that has like a good pattern on it and I tried it with a different stencil and it didn't work because the ink wasn't going through so you want to have a big pattern to be able to get this embossing powder on so I actually forgot to put the, um, the powder before the embossing but uh, if you put that on you will not get these extra effects of embossing mistakes on the outside but this is a really nice technique and I always like showing that mistakes happen and that's okay um, and it just really works really well that way 
So this is a really good way of using your stencils in a different way completely and also making it, you know, another fun technique. So I'm going to heat set this I want to heat set this but it's going too slow for the camera so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat set this off screen. So here it is all set and embossed and it looks really really shiny and really nice. Um, I did make a mistake here, it was wet from before from, uh, from I don't know if it was water or other ink and I think I put my fingers in here but if you don't look, if you actually look just at the top here. It looks like a really nice embossed area and I think I'm just going to cut this bottom part off because it just looks really nice when it's perfect and you don't want to have all that other nonsense there. So you could use this for a card, you could emboss it that way and this is a really fun and neat technique and just remember to use the powder which I forgot to use. The next technique, it's actually two techniques in one. So this is technique nine and 10 for the last ones. And it's using a larger stencil, something like this, like the elephant from Donna Downey. It doesn't have to be this one. But the cool thing about this one is that some stencils are not only stencils, but they're also masks. So what's nice about them is that you can use them both the inside or the outside. And many different stencils come this way. And you can see they're attached, but you can detach them and basically, uh, use them in two different ways. So I want to show you both techniques. Uh, the first one is going to be using the mask and the second one is using the actual stencil. And I have another stencil underneath that is from the Kais uh, from Kaiser Craft. And this is the only stencil that I'm using that is a 12 by 12 for this thing. I, I use a lot of 12 by 12 stencils for my layouts and for canvases. But today for the purpose of my of my actual um, video I wanted to sh I needed like smaller stencils like the six by six ones it was easier for me to use the, the smaller ones for the small techniques um, so that was um, why I did that sorry I just want to separate them all um, so today I'm so I'm gonna use this one for the last one stencils come in many different sizes and this is just one of the sizes that I have the 12 by 12 and this is I think probably an 8 by 8 and it's a really cool stencil I'm just going to show. It's called Good Luck Elephant, okay? So hold on. And I want to show the first technique. I won't be using this stencil. I'll be just using the mask. And what I'm going to do is this is already a paper that I had already used with a jelly plate. It doesn't have to be done with a jelly plate, but this is the nice thing about it, that you could do something like this. So I'm going to put the stencil here and what it's going to do is it's going to act as a mask and I'm going to add paint on top of it to cover up the rest. To mask it I'm going to use some black paint just to show you the contrast but you don't have to use the black paint. You can use any different, uh, any paint at all. It could be heavy or not. So um, just going to just get a little bit of this on my on my lid and then I'm going to just you can dab or you can just um, how do you call this uh, move in circles but I'm um, just for the purpose of this it's easier if I dab it around so oops you want to be just careful you don't lift the stencil you could use a temporary adhesive, but I didn't do that. I just went ahead and did this. And just, it's easier when it's like, you know, when it's at the top, when the elephant doesn't have like, the, you know, the small legs kind of lift up. So that's why you have to be careful with those ones. But if you're doing it at the top, it's not a problem. So there you go careful here with the tail and the leg again. So what it does, I mean you could cover the whole thing in black but what it does is that it masked it and then you have the pattern of the elephant right inside this black area and you can go back let's say 
you didn't you feel like you're missing some spots like for example I did here at the nose I go back and I cover that as well so you could go ahead after once you're done with this you can go ahead and cover the whole thing and you'll have that really nice pattern inside so you could use your jelly plate like you did before with the stencils and create this really nice page and then after that you can mask it using the uh, some type of masking stencil so that's for the for that technique now I'm gonna get going with the second technique For this last technique, I'm going to use the actual stencil and not the mask. And I'm going to double up stencils. I was going to use my the script stencil that you saw before, but I decided instead to use this one because I realized that the script stencil would not give the effect that I wanted. I need to make sure that um, the stencil is, covers everything and this, the other one, the script stencil, did not cover the whole elephant the way I wanted it. You do need a bigger of a stencil. This stencil that I have here is Prima, and it's um, eight, I think it's an eight and a half, seven and a half by nine. I'm not sure the size, but it fits perfectly in here. You could use a 12 by 12, uh, but I wanted to use something that is available on the market. So this is the one that I chose uh, because I can link it below. I didn't want to use, I've used stencils in the past where they're not available and then people can't purchase them and buy them and, and they get upset. So I want to make sure that I have this. So I wanted to make sure that it covers everything inside. And that's why of the reasons why I did this. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of tape to just hold this together, just do two stencils together, just to make sure that they don't move. Um, and the nice thing about this technique is that you could do anything with this. You could use um, ink with it, you could use, I mean, all the other techniques that I've done so far, you can actually use for this technique, because you could use ink, you can use paint, you could use paste, you could use anything, and it will just create um, a really nice pattern inside this elephant. So you do need a bigger stencil that is going to be kind of the, the shape of the, of the image and then you need something underneath to create a really nice texture. I'm going to um, take some light paste and I'm going to start basically applying it all around to create the shape of the elephant. The nice thing about this is that you can go after with the mask or even with the stencil and create an outline around the elephant or mask it backwards like I did before and just use it and use something darker to contrast this. You could use color for this and I'm not using colors because I could actually go ahead and spray it after if I wanted to. I just wanted to see how it looks with the 3D effect. But again, you could use paint for this, you could use the ink, so all of it works. Um, so this is a really fun technique to create that really nice um, elephant shaped. It could be any shape that you have as a stencil would work as well. And you want to just be able to take all the excess off. So always take the excess off. Okay. And now you basically remove everything carefully. And you should have a really nice elephant. So there you go. Once this is dry, which I'm going to dry right now, you could go ahead and outline it with, uh, with the same stencil. I could have outlined it to begin with, but I decided that I am just going to first add the the pattern on it. So I'm gonna dry this and come back to show you what I mean. Okay, once the image, image is dry, I could use the mask and just outline the elephant around. Or you did the technique I did before, which is masking with paint, but I could just use basically a marker. So I'm just using this Stamper's Big Brush Pen because that's what I had handy. And just basically go around and mark the elephant. You could use the actual stencil as well and oops and outline it and always be careful don't make mistakes. I mean I'm making mistakes because I'm going quickly because I don't want to waste time showing how I highlight it. And you could actually take after some watercolors and um, 
just paint inside the elephant so that's the nice thing about it so this is a really fun technique I always like uh, leaving the most um, intricate, intricate, intricate techniques to the end so that works well that way and um, yeah, I'm just going to finish the top of the elephant which is much easier I just find the legs a little bit and the trunk a little bit more a little bit harder to do just because they move and here are the tusks and I just suppose pink you don't have to choose pink I mean I'm just just want to show that you can do that you can do it with the outline and there you go and then you have the actual elephant uh, you could take some watercolor paint and just basically color in inside you could spray it you could do anything you could just go with the spray and you could go back with let's say you want to actually have the outline again you could go back with this um, Excuse me, I never had to sneeze in the middle of a show and in the middle of a video. Um, so uh, you can just go back, put this on and then spray and you kind of have it contain as much as you can. And that works as well. I mean, it might run underneath, so you want, might want to put it from further up, but that's okay. You could always mask it again. Oh, it didn't. Look, you see how nice. And then you can create your own patterns, your own colors. And that's a really fun technique that way. Okay, so here are the two elephants that I created. That was technique number nine and 10 and using the masks and the double stencil. So I really had fun in showing you all my favorite techniques with stencils, 10 favorite techniques. There's so many other techniques that you can do and variations of my technique. Uh, for the first one, right, that I used them, the light paste, so a modeling paste, you could use texture paste, you could use crackle paste, you could use basically anything, any paint, anything. Uh, that is thick enough to create this embossed kind of look and um, then we you could use of course sprays which is what I used in this one uh, I love using this reverse technique of using um, some medium that is reacts with water and then using baby wipes to kind of remove the excess uh, of course any type of ink will work with this so definitely try with this um, in terms of like uh, patterns, making patterns with paints and sponges. So that's a really fun way of doing it as well. And one of my favorite techniques is using the gel plate and that's really fun to do as well. So these are like the gel plates and the ghost images of it. Um, my favorite one I'm gonna put on top because I really like it. And uh, of course you can do, uh, just use the stencil just as outlines with some pencil or do some embossing techniques and that's really fun to do so i really had fun creating all of these and just remember and i'm a very big rule of cleaning your stencils i'm not the best at doing this but if you didn't clean your stencils after using all these techniques then go ahead and watch my video about how to clean stencils and what's the best product to clean them all and um, thank you so much for watching uh, if you like my video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel and please share these with your friends so other people can learn the some techniques with stencils and if you have any other stencils ideas please share them with me in the comment area i really love like listening to all the different comments that people put and you know if you, you know some really cool technique with stencils i'd love to hear about it so i can try it in my work and thanks so much bye